Hey everybody, Aaron from The Impatient Gardener. We're talking about compost today. Okay, I love compost. I think every gardener loves compost because if you've gardened for any amount of time, you've probably found no limit to the number of things you can use compost for. And there's so much satisfaction in returning things back to your garden that do good for your garden. And frankly, compost, if you buy it, is extremely expensive. So it's just so much better when you can make your own. I don't know that any home gardener can actually make enough compost to support what they do in their garden. I could use, I could use 20 times the amount of compost, 100 times the amount of compost that I can produce here, but any little bit helps, right? But I take a pretty lazy person's approach to composting. So keep in mind that Mother Nature does a pretty good job composting. Mother Nature does the composting for us. When we have a composting system or a way of composting, all we're trying to do is essentially speed up the process that's going to happen naturally, whether we intervene or not. So compost is just materials decomposing to create um, a great byproduct of that decomposition. And it really couldn't be simpler. Pretty much anything that has been alive will break down. It's just that by taking a little bit of a strategic approach to it, you can make this process happen faster. So even if you know very little about composting, you probably know this whole thing about carbons and nitrogen, browns and greens. And there's a list of all kinds of things that you can put in there, but let's just put it this way. You can put anything that has been growing into your compost. Avoid meat, avoid cooked food, avoid um, anything that's got a fat in it just because it will attract pests. And we'll talk about weeds and what else you can put in there. But if it was alive, you can put it in your compost. But the way to make your compost really get going and go quickly is to roughly balance out your browns and your greens, your carbon rich materials and your nitrogen rich materials. This can be, there is a range that people will tell you. Sometimes you'll hear it's 10 to one. Sometimes you'll hear it's 20 to one. It's always more brown stuff to green stuff. Hey, just jumping in quickly here to talk about that ratio quickly. So if you end up with way more greens than browns, what you can end up with is a really slimy, stinky compost pile. So if you find that you're starting to get some odors or the whole thing feels a little bit like LJ almost, just kind of slimy and slippery, you've got too many greens. So you need to get some browns in there. So if you don't have a bunch of dried leaves around, this could be straw, this could be ripped up newspaper, ripped up cardboard boxes, um, shredded paper. If you work in an office where they shred office paper, that makes great compost. So if you find yourself with a slimy, slippery, stinky situation, just add some browns to it, mix it in and wait a little bit and the situation will fix itself. All right, back to the rest now. But if you're a gardener, there's a problem with that because we tend to get a whole bunch of green stuff at once and a whole bunch of brown stuff at once. And rarely do the two happen at the same time. So that's where this lazy method of composting that I have comes in. So I've got two compost bins. Um, the, we added the second one last year. All I do is these brackets that I have here. It's pretty much an aesthetic thing. I got the brackets from Lee Valley Tool. I'll link those for you. And then you put your own boards in. Um, and I made these into five, I think they're five by five beds. Um, or maybe one's four by five. I think they're five by five beds. Um, and then you fill them up, right? So the vast majority of the browns in my garden come from leaves. These are all leaves that were um, shredded last year. I think just by the lawnmower. I don't think we put them through the chipper shredder. I think we just did it um, by mulching them up with the lawnmower and pouring the bagged leaves in here. And that's most of what you see here. There's some refuse from cleaning out the garden last year. There's some kitchen scraps in here um, that goes, we do put our kitchen scraps and our coffee filter or coffee and all that in here. But that's pretty much what's in here right now. So this will break down eventually, but not quickly because there's just not enough nitrogen in it. So this is where the one thing I do for my compost really comes in. I don't believe in buying things for your compost. As far as I'm concerned, that defeats the purpose. So don't ever go out and buy things. I've seen people try to start compost piles and go buy things. Don't buy anything to start your compost pile. It is absolutely not necessary. You're producing what you need in your garden. But this is where I make an exception. In spring, I add this. This 
is an alfalfa cube. About once every five years, I go to the feed store and I buy a 50 pound bag of alfalfa cube. It's horse food. And uh, I soak them. This one is just starting, they're very dehydrated. This is quite an old bag. So I'm soaking these in water right now to sort of reconstitute them. But alfalfa is an extremely good source of nitrogen. Um, in fact, you've probably heard of alfalfa teas or feeding your roses alfalfa. Good stuff happening uh, in alfalfa. So by adding some of this alfalfa soup that I'm going to create here to my compost, I get a big shot of nitrogen in a small amount of stuff. I will mix that up. Everything is broken down pretty fine here. You know, one way you can speed up your compost is by chopping everything up as small as you can. The leaves are certainly chopped up. Some of the um, yard waste is, the kitchen scraps are not. I don't do anything with those. So once this alfalfa is reconstituted, I will put that in here. And actually what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to combine these two. I ran out of room because the leaves are so tall. Now that they've condensed a little bit, I think what I'm gonna do is try to get everything from one bin into here. That way I've got one bin going and then it's very easy for me to stir this, flip it over, put it in the other bin in a few weeks once things are really cooking in here. With this alfalfa, I can get these beds cooking to 140 degrees. It is amazing how quickly it makes a difference. So the other things that help with make your compost speed up, of course, are air. You get that by stirring it and water. It's got to be moist. And when I get down into the middle of this bed, these leaves are pretty dry. And we had a half an inch of rain yesterday. So they always say that they always say it should be the moisture of a wrung out sponge, these are quite dry. So don't think that if you water the top, you're gonna to get anywhere near all this stuff. You can't get water to the middle of this. So you really either have to stir, or sometimes you can take a stick and poke a hole and put water down that way. In any case, I don't wanna give you the impression that I do a lot to this compost. To give you an idea of how much work I put into this compost, other than just the act of putting stuff in the compost, I will go in here and I will put this uh, alfalfa cubes in here um, and I will stir this up as best I can, although it's very hard to stir at this point. I will water all this. I'll flip the other stuff in here, give it another stir. Um, and when I say stir, I mean just kind of working it a little bit. There's no way I can pick this all up. I will wait probably a month and then I will come back here and it will be a big job, but I will try to flip everything into the bed next to it, which will give it a really good stir and then I should, could have finished compost, you know, maybe a couple of months after that. So would I like more compost? Would I like my compost be finished quicker? Absolutely. Of course I would. I, I, like I said, I have so much use for compost in my garden. Am I willing to put a ton of work into it? Nope. I have other things I need to be doing in the garden. Um, I have other ways to get arm workouts. Uh, I don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time tending this. So this is my lazy person's way of making compost. But I will say last fall I was able to top off most of my garden beds with homemade compost. We emptied these beds completely last year. Now I've got two so I'm hoping I will actually have two full servings of compost every year but we'll see. Okay so I've waited about as long as I'm willing to wait. Most of these have broken down into smaller pieces um, and they will I mean, they're still a little bit dry in the middle, but um, hopefully there will now be enough moisture in this bed that it won't be an issue. They're all breaking apart in my hands pretty well. So I'm gonna call this good because um, you could sit here all day waiting for these things. In fact, it probably would have been better if I'd even started these the day before um, and let them soak. They'll still continue to break down here. So now I'm just gonna cover this whole area with some of this little my little sludge here. Sometimes I try to get it more on the edges because the inside, the middle of your compost pile will always go faster than the outsides because it will always be warmer in there. So sometimes I work, concentrate a little bit harder on that, on the outside. Now, because I want to make sure that everything is thoroughly wet, I'm going to go in here with the hose and I'm going to like dig the hose down in there let the hose run in a few different spots. So while I'm 
pushing the hose around in here just to make sure that we're getting water all the way through the pile. Let's just talk about weeds quickly. And you might have noticed that while we were waiting for that to soak, I did throw some garlic mustard weed in there. Um, just the tops though. So the theory with weeds is that you shouldn't put weeds in your compost pile because if there are seeds there and your pile isn't hot enough, and frankly, most home composting piles are not hot enough, um, you won't kill them and now you're just passing your weeds along. However, if you use some caution, some weeds are fine to get in there. For instance, I ripped the roots off this garlic mustard weed, which otherwise could possibly take root in here, and just ripped the tops off it. And um, those aren't going to do anything bad. They're not going to um, grow. There's obviously no flower yet, so there's no worry about seeds. Now, and you can do that with pretty much any other kind of weed. Perennial weeds, you just want to be a little bit careful with, of course. Now, the thing is, is that if you're going to get into a situation where you have to start ripping weeds apart to put them into your compost pile, are you really going to do that? I mean, if the answer is yes, then more power to you. I'm probably not, to be honest with you. Like I said, I'm sort of a lazy composter. And um, so I actually have another pile, um, which is literally just a pile in the woods. And by the way, that works perfectly well for compost too. And that's where I throw anything weedy, anything that I'm worried about um, potentially causing a problem in a compost pile, anything um, that's woodier that I don't want to cut down. If you put big, thick branches, I mean, this is last year's, last year's time and that's pretty fine stem so I will put that in there but if you get into like big big, big stems those take forever to break down and of course you can go through and you can chop those up and then put them in again this is lazy man's composting here all of those things go in their own pile in the woods and uh, that will actually make great compost all on its own. I don't turn it, I don't do anything with it but it all breaks down I actually let it just sort of feed that corner but that's what I do with it. Obviously nothing gets thrown away except for noxious weeds. Um, garlic mustard weed, if I were to leave it intact with roots and potentially flowers and seeds, absolutely gets bagged. Um, anything invasive, things like that, definitely don't go near my compost pile. But you can put more things in your compost than you would think. Sometimes they just take a little bit of extra work and if you're willing to do that, that's great. And if you're not like me, you know, that's okay too. What you're seeing me do today is the most time I spend on a compost pile all year long. I do this once in spring, this whole alfalfa thing, um, and trying to give it a stir and getting in there. And if I do this well, if I get in there and make sure that everything is thoroughly watered, um, all of this will do its own thing from here on out, and I won't have to worry much about it. Like I said, I will come back in about a month. I'll probably try to flip everything into the second bin, um, but before I had a second bin, I just gave it a little stir and that was fine too. So let's not make compost more complicated than it needs to be because Mother Nature already does it. You're just trying to make her do it a little faster. So don't overthink compost. In fact, don't let a complicated compost strategy stop you from starting composting. If you can find a uh, corner of your yard to start a pile start throwing it there if you don't want to worry about it getting all messed up make a little chicken wire cage for it my first compost pile i uh enclosed with pal old, old pallets um, you can buy a composter you can buy all kinds of things but don't let um don't let it stop you because first of all it's a great way to reduce waste in landfills um, because landfills actually don't have air and they don't have often water and so what happens is um, things don't break down that would break down in a compost. So stop throwing stuff away that doesn't need to be thrown away and start a bit of a compost pile. And if you don't want to worry about it, then just throw it in the compost pile and come back in a couple of years. It'll probably be good. If you want more out of your compost pile, do something like I'm doing here. And if you want a really great compost pile, then spend some more time layering your browns and greens, saving greens to add to browns so that you have a really good balanced pile throughout the year and you will have fabulous compost and you will have it quickly. All right, I'm gonna finish up my watering on this and then I'm gonna flip the rest of this into here and that's it for now. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm just trying to sort of demystify this compost process um, because you know, I think we all have a way of making things a little bit more complicated than they need to be sometimes. 
Um, and I'm guilty of that on occasion too, certainly. Uh, but when it comes to compost, simple and lazy is the way I roll. All right, you have a great day in your garden and we'll see you soon.